Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back and in this video we're going to take a look at a very awesome resource when it comes to Linux Brevesk and that is GTFO bins. So GTFO bins are essentially a list of Unix binaries that can be used to bypass local security restrictions in misconfigured systems. A big shout out to the authors Emilio Pina and Andrea Kardashi. This is a project that is similar to the living off the land binaries for Windows systems and an absolute staple for those of you who are taking part in CTFs or prepping for certs. As you can see here they have over 300 binaries at this point and we're going to be demonstrating just a few of them today. Um, so here on my Kali attack box I'll be simulating an authenticated SSH connection into a remote host and then I'll be using these binaries to escalate my privileges to root. Um, as you can see now we're logged in as the victim user and if I run a sudo-l we can see all the commands that can be run as root. As you can see here, we have env, rpm, gdb, and map. Uh, there's a bunch. So let's clear out the terminal first and start with the first command, which is env. Uh, is a Unix command used to print out a list of environment variables. If we type sudo env and we redirect the output to bin bash, we instantly get to the root user. Nice. We exit the shell, and we can try another one. Uh, so the next one is going to be RPM, which is an acronym for Red Hat Package Manager. If we run this command here, we get to root right away. Boom. We can exit again. So right up next is going to be GDB, which is the default GNU debugger on Unix systems. Running this one-liner here, gets us to root instantly, id, root, and exit. We can keep it up and do php next. Uh, first, we need to export a command variable. And now we can run it, and we can get redirected into a root shell. Let's try it out. Paste. and BAM. If we type ID, we can see that we are indeed root. So now we have Vim, which is the de facto standard for Unix text editors. Um, here I'm going to edit the command and redirect to bash instead. So we do bin bash instead of sh. And if we run it, you can see that we are root. Give me a second because I need to kill the process. I know you guys are going to troll me for this, but honestly, I hate Vim. Let's quit. And right, perfect. Clear the terminal. Next. So the next command we're going to exploit is nice, which is used to assign more CPU time to any given process. We can just run sudo nice bin bash and we are root. Okay, perfect. So one cool feature of these binaries is that they can be used to read Etsy password or even Etsy shadow on a target. Uh, an example of that is DD, which is a command line utility used to convert file. If we run this command right here, sudo dd if, Etsy shadow, you can see that we're able to read the password um, ash for all the users. So at this point it becomes trivial to crack them and get to root. Uh, user bin date also works in a similar fashion. As you can see we can export an L file and then leverage the date command to read Etsy shadow. So if we run that Paste that sudo date fl file, and again we have the ashes for Tony Soprano and for this victim in Redcliffe as well. So we have three users. I'm going to show you one last way that we can accomplish this using OpenSSL. Uh, hold on a second, because I forgot to run it with sudo like an idiot. There it is. Now, we can try nmap next. So as you can see here, you could just copy this entire command 
you slap that into your target session, copy, paste, and boom, ID, root. Right, so now we can try a slightly harder one, but not that hard, really, which would be zip. So with zip, uh, first we need a change into temp, and here we have to touch a test.txt file. And at this point, we can use this one line right here to gain root access. Let's try it out. Paste, and boom root again. Exit. Now let's check out base32 next. Uh, by the way, I believe the same technique is also valid for base64. Uh, so we just copy that. We paste it. Let's go back. Clear. sudo bin base32. And here, what we can do is that we can read Root's private, uh, private SSH keys. So we then use these keys to SSH directly as Root, which is a pretty neat technique. The next one is going to be hping3, which is similar to the ping command, but runs on TCP port 80. We can just run sudo hping3, and once we escape the shell, redirect that to uh, bin bash. So we'll do that right now, bin bash, and we are root. Awesome. Exit, once again, all right. So let's do CPU limit now. Just as a side note, um, there's this command right here. Let me copy it out. So you might want to try another value here instead of 100, 80, or 90, also work. Let's try it and ID root. Now, we can do Python now, and the same exact syntax works out for Python 2 or uh, Python 3. So let's copy and paste this command. And again, we are root. The next one we're going to do is ash. So ash is basically, uh, no, we're going to do find. Let's do find. Um, see how it works. Just paste that, sudo find exec bin sh, and works like magic, root. Right. So the next one is ash. I was kind of... Ash, I gotta say, is one of my favorites. So it's basically a precursor of bash. We just do sudo ash, and as you can see here, we are root. That's pretty fast. So the next one we can test for is awk, which is a command line utility used to find patterns in text. We can grab this one liner here, run it, and we are root. Now, okay, perfect, we can do SCP. I'm going to be shameless and tell you guys to go check out my other video on file transfers. We're actually demonstrating how to use SCP in file transfers. Uh, once again, we can run that in one go, and we are root. The manual command is next. Uh, we run sudo man man twice. And then we get redirected to another shell, and from here we can get to the root user. Do shebang bin bash or bin sh, and we are root. All right, let's get out of here. Okay. So FTP also works in a similar way. We can type sudo FTP. So we're going to do sudo ftp. We get redirected to a shell, and now we can do bin bash. Right. And again, we are root. Let's get out of here. Exit. Next is going to be ed. Uh, ed is another, or ed, I don't know. 
is another text editor in Unix systems. Uh, we can do sudo ed into a shell and then bin bash root exit uh, once again. Okay, we stop it, clear. We have a few more commands, so I'm uh, trying to speed things up. Tar. Uh, so for tar, we have this awesome one liner here. Just pasted. Bam. Wrote. Okay. Let's exit. F lock or flock, which is used to manage locks from within shell scripts. We can see if this one work. Um, this one works. Uh, let's run it, and indeed it does. Exit. So next we can check out the expect command, which is used to automate running scripts on Linux systems. We caught, we paste that, and no big deal. We are root again. Exit. Uh, SoCat is yet another tool that I talk about in my file transfers video, so you guys might want to check it out. Copy that, paste it, and bin bash. ID, root, it's another easy one. We can see if Perl now works as well. Just rinse and repeat, copy paste it, and again, id root. So the last one is going to be strace, which is a debugging tool. Um, is going to be the last root of this video. We paste that, execute it, and root again. Perfect. So let me clear out the terminal first. Uh, so these are just some of the binaries we worked on today. Once again, I would like to give all the credit to the authors of this project. This is an awesome resource for the pen testing community. Most of these binaries are useful for CTFs, but you'll be surprised at the amount of lazy system administrators out there that actually leave this type of misconfigurations laying around for us to exploit. I appreciate you guys, and let me know what you think down below in the comment section. See you in the next.